In my previous YouTube video, I talk about how I set up my DJI drone to shoot stills, or more specifically, stills for real estate photography. I thought I'd do a follow-up video, and I will give you a brief overview of how I process those photos using Adobe Lightroom. Hi, I'm Grant, and I will show you my fairly quick and easy workflow that I use for processing my drone stills using Adobe Lightroom. Now I'm no expert in Adobe Lightroom, but this is the workflow that works well for me in delivering photos for clients. So let's go to the computer and have a look. Okay, I am on my computer now and I have Adobe Lightroom CC opened up. Now the first thing I do is I go and import the photos and I've just put one, one particular photo, which you'll see here in a folder on my desktop, which I'll import for, to show an example of how I process it. And that's here in this Lightroom for real estate. And you'll see here there's actually three photos. And that is because if you look at my previous video, I set up my drone to shoot each shot using auto exposure bracketing. So therefore it gives me three slightly different shots of the same image. One, one at the exposure I set, one slightly under and one slightly over. So I'll import all three. And then I click on the develop module. Now if I scroll through these three shots, you'll see here, this was the shot that I set the exposure for. This next shot, the camera automatically underexposed a little bit, and this last shot, the camera slightly overexposed a little bit. And this just gives me some options in case I wasn't on the money with my exposure. So in this case, I'm actually gonna use the one that's slightly under, because it's always easier to bring images up or the exposure up, but if you've blown out your whites, for example, in your clouds, it's really difficult to bring your exposure back down and get the detail back in the, the areas that you've perhaps overexposed. So let's go with this middle image here. We go to develop. Now the first thing I'll often do is I will crop this if needs be, but I'm kind of happy with the framing on here because I generally pass these photos once I've processed them directly onto my client who then either uses them on their website or in a, or in a magazine, so I let them do their own cropping. Now first up, I adjust the white balance if needed. Now I set a manual white balance with my drone when I was taking the shot, so I'm kind of happy with this. Let's leave that, leave that as it is. Now I use this first slider here for exposure and I bring up the house or the area of interest which is the house to about there, looks all right. The next thing I do is I go to the highlight slider and I generally, if there's sky involved, I will just about always take it right back. And this you'll see starts bringing back the detail in the clouds or the, the very bright areas of the image. I generally add a little bit of shadow between sort of 10 and 20. We'll add that to about there. Now, whites and blacks. Now, the trick here is if you hold down the option key on a Mac, I'm not sure what it is on a PC, but I'm sure it's easy to find out. If you hold down the key and then slide the slider, you'll see the image goes completely black. But what this will do now is that if I keep sliding the slider, you'll just see there on the image that's telling me that that exposure is 100% or bright white and you cannot get any more detail out of it. So there's clouds there, so I will generally bring that up to about, just so I've seen a little bit of clipping right there, 100%, and I'll do the same for the black slider. I'll hold the option key down again, and I'll slide it to the left until the blacks start. And this is telling me that that is 100% black. So now I know that the black areas in this image, for example, in here, and the white areas are up here, so I've got from black to white exposure. Now, I still think that exposure is perhaps a little bit too hot there, so I might bring that back just a, just a fraction to about there. Now, the only other thing I do here is I go to clarity, and I generally give that about a five, and vibrance about a three, and saturation about a three. I don't like to overdo that here or make it look too, uh, my aim is to make these pictures as natural as possible and that's a personal preference, obviously. Okay, the only other thing I sometimes do, and this again is a matter of personal preference, just to bring the sky in the top of the picture back a little bit more sometimes, I add a graduated filter. So I click on the graduated filter tool over here and I drag it down to about there in the top of the horizon. I go across to the sliders, and then I just knock the exposure back a bit. And sometimes the highlights back a little bit as well. 
might spread an exposure up a little bit, so I don't get too black. And click done. And that just brings the sky back even a little bit more. Personal preference, again, as I said, but sometimes I've found this helps to perhaps make the main focus, which of course is the house and land stand out a little bit more without the sky dominating it. So that's all I will generally do for pictures. I then export them, I go to file, export. Now I go for email to hard drive because I generally deliver it on a USB drive or a Dropbox a folder to the client. I will choose a specific folder and I will put it in the folder that I did, uh, that I imported the, the pictures from. And we'll give it a specific name. Great pick, for want of a better name. I go down to JPEG, I want 100% JPEG quality. I don't resize it because I want it maximum quality. And then export it. And there you'll see the, the finished picture there. Cool, great pick. And just to show you what it looked like at the start, if I go back over to the history panel, here's what the picture looked like at the start. Here is what it looks like when I've finished it. And that's it, that's the workflow that works well for me. I hope you found something useful there. As always, likes and subscribes much appreciated and see you in the next video.